Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. I am in San Francisco's Exploratorium Science Museum, where as you can see next to me is one of Teo Janssen's Strawn Base. That's right, these are the beach walking machines that Dutch artist Teo Janssen has been building for 20 years five years. Now, you may have seen the video recently where Adam encountered his first strong base in the wild on the beaches of San Francisco. And the reason they're in San Francisco is for this exhibit. Teo Janssen has a traveling exhibit. This is the only time they'll be shown on the West Coast in the United States, and we're so delighted to be able to see them in person, give you a little preview of the exhibit. Look at these amazing creatures up in person, and maybe chat with Teo about their design and construction. I'm so excited. First of all, how does a strong base work? What makes the strong base a strong base? Well, over 25 years ago, Theo Janssen, when he was a physicist, came up with the idea to use an evolutionary algorithm on his Atari computer to configure the strong base linkage systems, Janssen's linkage. And what that exact linkage means is the lengths, these 13 magic numbers, of actually 11 numbers spread across 13 pieces of PVC piping, calculated over a month of computing time for the perfect walking motion. So you have a crankshaft that goes along the spine of the Strawn base. And over time, as wind blows it, the linkage system is designed so that the foot of the Strawn base walks across the beach, a flat surface with as much contact with the ground as possible to have maximum propulsion. And this design, these specific lengths of this PVC piping, which can be scaled up, there's, there's a ratio or portions, uh, that is what informs the Strawn base's DNA and all the creatures he's created since have that DNA. One of the questions I had when I first saw a strong base was, why does Teo use PVC piping? And it turns out, in the Netherlands, electrical wiring and houses are wrapped around this type of PVC pipe. And using just this material, this, this limitation, is actually what informs his design of the beasts themselves. And what's really cool is going along with this evolution and creature analogy, these pieces from old Strand base are considered fossils, and he can actually date them based on the discoloring of the PVC piping. The whiter they are from that yellow color, that cheese-like yellow color, the older they are. Teo, it's great to meet you. Thank Likewise. you so much. So this exhibit's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, you talked a little earlier about how these are all extinct creatures. Uh, why are they extinct? Why are they dead in your eyes? Yeah, well, it becomes a moment after working a summer uh, with these animals on the beach that I don't like to repair anymore uh, because I hate repairs. I want to make new things. I don't want to repair the old things. So I leave them as they are and start a new animal. One Is it one new animal every year? They have a lifespan of about yeah, a year? Yeah, more or less. Yeah. Wow. I'm working now on the 39th animal, so there has been some irregular times in between. Yeah. yeah. So this creature behind us, this is one of the largest you've built. It has traits and attributes that are far removed from your mm -hmm. very first one. Mm -hmm. What are you incorporating now into your latest Tron bees? The first years, of course, I've worked on richness, that they were strong enough to survive the winds on the beach. And now I'm working more on, on the muscle so they can uh, store the wind in these pet bottles on the back by moving the wings, they pump air into these pet bottles and they can use that energy to uh, activate muscles which mm. are nothing but pumps or skip holes which pull the animal over the beach just into walk in case that the wind falls away on the beach. So this, in terms of the history of the strong base, survival, just existing on the beach in its environment was the one of the first phases and now as some type of memory and, and intelligence and things that mirror uh, biology. Well, still, still surviving because still surviving. they need that to survive. Now the strong base are unique to their environment. So the environment and the materials, mm -hmm. they inform their design. Yeah. Um, is, how does this interact with the beach in, in new ways? Every time I had to find new strategies to, to survive, for instance, 
when there's a storm, there's a lot of sand in the air and it covers its legs. And if you wouldn't do anything, it would just bury itself. So uh, this year is gonna, I'm going to work on ski poles, which lift the animal up every hour to shake off the sand of their legs. And then they will stand on a, on a sort of hill. And so the hill will grow and see if they can build dunes. And the whole idea is that you want these to be self-sustaining without right. any human interference That's right. as much as possible. When you, when you interact, when you pull the strong base, as we saw you did on the beach and yes. outside, yeah. I mean, you almost, it's a symbiotic relationship. Yeah. You, you also want to see them live on their own? Well, you could see this as, uh, as your children. You, 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 you live in harmony with your children, but there comes a moment that you kick them on the street and say, you do it yourself. And that's going to happen with the strand beast as well. Now you talked a little also about the, the restrictions of the materials. You yes. know, PVC piping, that the, the 13 magic numbers mm -hmm. and the ratios of it, that informs the design. But you're also bringing, you know, sale materials, uh, the plastic bottles. Yeah. Is the idea of something, plastic is that restriction? Yeah, you could say that I wouldn't like to use metal or electronics in there. Mm. But I didn't know how to make sale out of tubes. <laughs> it's, uh, so that's why I had to use is to buy this sail, and I don't know how to store the pressure. Well, you can do it in in tubes, but it's a very little volume, and it's very heavy concerning of uh, comparing to the weight of it. So, and these petal bottles are so light, so and they are so available that I prefer to do this in pet bottles. So. I must admit, those are sins against my religion to use other materials than this, this electricity tube. But somehow, I have to sin sometimes. What do you imagine the next epochs to be? What will be the things that bring this epoch to a close? Well, I think that the, so during the last few years, I, I dis discovered several methods of surviving. And I think in the coming years, all these methods will land in one animal. Oh. So they can do it all, like anchor themselves and loosen themselves and take the decision themselves, steering themselves over the hard sand while walking, because I see these animals as migration animals. They walk between two places on the Dutch coast oh. and they have to take the decisions when the wind turns, what to do, all those kind of things. And then globally, that, that DNA has been propagated. So the Dutch strandbase, the ones from your hands yes. are one one species and then there are relatives yes. across the world that's right so yes lots of students make strand bees and you could see this as a as a self-reproducing strand bees because they use the, stu the students to produce them and you see that kind of uh, strand bees usually small ones you see them appearing in all parts of the world and student rooms and bookshelves and those uh, they don't survive on beaches but they reproduce so well <laughs> well, I think well, out there, the makers who are building, using that linkage system, we're happy to be agents of this philosophy and this religion. Thank you so much. You're it's welcome. It's a great pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Something that's really cool about Teo's philosophy of the strong base is he really sees these as creatures, organic creatures that have an evolution. And to illustrate that, the Exploratorium has designed the exhibit to show off the different evolutionary periods, these epochs of the strand base, which really fall into logical categories. You look up, you have the tape period, the strap period, when the hot heat gun was first introduced into the construction of the strand base, the using different materials, the wood period, which is like a deviation from that PVC material. And then of course, right now we're in the brains period where there's some form of memory and intelligence in the strand base. And that's where all these strand beasts in these exhibits are from. This is a truly exhilarating experience. What an exhibit. I'm gonna spend a little bit more time here getting closer to these strand base. You can also see these in person at the Exploratorium. The exhibit is open now until September. Hope you can make it out to see it. Until then, I'm Norm, and I'll see you next time.